It's five o'clock on a Wednesday. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. And it's time for... Craig and Ryland's Magic Review Show. Absolutely. Uh, welcome back. We have four really good trips in this in this episode, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, for those of you that are new to this uh, this review show, we review four tricks every single time. We perform everything that we review. And we are 100% honest, aren't we? Do you lie? Yeah. Do you lie? No. I don't lie. Do you lie? No. no. Okay, cool. So uh, we've got a new David Regal item uh, as our first review. So let's get on with that right now. Okay, so the first review that we have is David Regal. You really like David Regal, don't you? Yeah. He, he, Ryan was gutted because I did an interview with David Regal that's going to be on the channel soon. And, uh, and, and it was really late, so you didn't get a chance to sit in on the interview. But you know what? You haven't watched the interview yet. He said that you were annoying. He did. One of your favourite magicians said that you are annoying. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, so uh, David Regal has brought out colour changing knives. Now, there are so many different colour changing knives uh, routines out there, so many different colour changing knives that you can buy. Uh, I'm going to be talking all about why these are so good, but for those of you that haven't seen the colour changing knife routine, I'm going to show you something that uh, uses some of the moves that David puts in the, uh, in the download. So let's, let's uh, do a performance first of all, and then we'll talk about what we think about it. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay, so Ryland, I've got a couple of knives in my pocket uh, right here. I've got a black knife, you can check that one out. I've got a white knife, you can check that one out as well. Uh, I'd rather you don't open them because you're eight, which is why I'm doing this trick and you're not. Uh, but they are real knives. If you actually open them, you would see that they're real knives. Open it. Okay, I'll open it just so you can see it's a real knife. There you go. There it is. Real knife. So... Here we go. Uh, there's five, when you become a magician, there's five different things that you have to learn how to do. And I'm going to demonstrate all five of these things using these two knives. Actually, I'll use the, uh, the back one first of all. So the first thing you have to learn is how to make something disappear. That looks like this. If I squeeze the knife, it disappears. That's the first thing you have to learn. It's called vanishing. The next thing you have to learn is making something appear. You see, if I take a piece of dust right there, watch that dust. If I squeeze it, I can turn it into a knife. That's making things appear. Uh, the other thing that you have to be able to do is penetration. That, makes, that means solid going through solid. So if I took this knife, I could actually pull it through the back of my hand. Or if I wanted to, I could actually pull it through the back that way. Uh, that's penetration. Also, the other thing that you need to learn, there's six actually. I always forget about the sixth one. The fourth thing that you have to learn is teleportation. That means making something jump somewhere else. So for example, if I took this knife and squeezed, that looks like it disappeared, but it didn't. It's actually gone into my, uh, into my pocket down here, you see. I teleported it into my pocket. But the hardest thing that you have to learn as a magician is transposition. Now, transposition means making two things change places, which is why the white knife's here, because I'm going to show you what a transposition looks like. Now, Ryan, if I take the white knife and put the white knife over here, where's the white knife? Yeah. Now, that's the black knife. You see, that's a, transport uh, that's, a, that's a transposition. What I did, I made the black knife and the white knife change places. Let's do it again. If I take the, black, the white knife and put it here, you can see the white knife until I shake it, and that's when they actually change places. So now you know that I'm doing a, 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 trans a, a, a transposition. Let's see if we can do it one more time, okay? I'll take the white knife. I'll put the white knife here. All you have to do is tell me where's the white knife. I'm going to give you a. I'm going to give you a clue. There's the black knife. So where's where's the, I'm going to give you another clue. I'm going to give you another clue. Where's the white knife? There. No, it's there. You forgot about the transposition. If the white knife's there. Where's the black one? There. No, no, that's the white knife. Aren't you paying attention? Where's the black it's knife? There. No, that's the white knife. That, you're confusing yourself, aren't you? It's weird. Um, you can even if you if you get good at this, you can even do this long distance. Let me show you what I mean. If I reach in and take the black knife and put it into my pocket, what does that leave here? White. It leaves white until I shake. You'll see it happen, watch this. It changes into the black knife. If the black knife's here, what's in my pocket? Uh, white. The white, no, 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 that's the black knife. The white knife's here, it's so weird, isn't it? Look, that's the white knife, that's the black knife. Look, I tell you what, I said there were six things. The last thing that you have to be able to do is the hardest thing to loss. It's called uh, transmogrification. And what it basically means is turning something into something else. So I want you to watch this knife very carefully and don't blink. We've only got one life now, so it's easy to follow. I'm going to try and turn this into a Swiss Army knife. And it's going to happen on three. Watch one, two, three. And just like that, I can turn it into a Swiss Army knife. There it is. That is David Regal's Colour Changing Knives. 
Right, so that is David Regal's colour changing knife set. Is it is it different to the other knife tips that you've done before? Well, you have seen me stuff, do stuff with other knives before, and that's a really good question. And that's probably a question a lot of people are asking. I remember the first colour changing knife routine I learned was Daryl's, and man, those knives were really hard to paddle. I mean, they were really difficult to paddle. Great trick, but really difficult to paddle. And then uh, I went through a few other different knives. I ended up on Joe Mogar's knives, which are the knives that most people use. I have to say, and I love Joe's a bit, David's knives are better uh, for a few different reasons. First of all, let me just take this, uh, this Swiss Army knife and change it. Uh, first of all, they're similar to Joe's in that uh, there's obviously uh, a black one and a white one. The white one is mother of pearl, and so it's very smooth. The black one um, is, is kind of like a bone texture. So you can feel in your pockets which knife is which just by feel. Um, the nice thing about David's routine is it resets instantly. So as soon as I put this knife away, I'm reset, ready to do it again. Uh, the knives are a little bit wider. They handle a little bit better. Another nice thing about the knives is, although they are built like proper knives, uh, as you saw earlier on, they have been made so that they are blunted. So they won't actually hurt people. Uh, they are, the, the blades are blunted, which is really quite nice. But they handle, they're a little bit more weighty than Joe's knives. They handle a, little, uh, they handle a lot better, in my opinion. Uh, but the, the main thing is they are a lot thicker. Now, so that's in terms of the difference. Now, you get four knives with this routine. Uh, if anybody knows color changing knives, you get a normal black knife, a normal white knife, you get the you get the half and half gimmick, and then you also get another gimmick which allows you to do the Swiss Army knife at the end where it turns into the red knife. Now, my problem with color changing knife routines an awful lot is that there's no ending. There's always no ending. It's like they change places, they change places, they change places, and that's it, goodbye. Uh, and I've played with lots of endings. I've played with using a rainbow knife, but it kind of looks too magic-y. And I've played with using a red knife with Joe Mogar's knives. The difference between Joe Mogar's red knives and David Regal's red knife is this really does look like a Swiss Army knife. It's, it's the right color because it's wider. It looks better. There's no rivets. And also, you've got the logo there. So if you look at this knife compared to, say, the black knife, you can see that there's a big difference. And obviously Swiss Army knives are so recognizable. I've even played with like having lots of little knives appear at the end, but they're just really difficult to keep in your pocket. This is a great ending. Having a Swiss Army knife appear at the end, that's like one of the nicest things about this set. The fact that you get this change at the end where you can turn it into a Swiss Army knife. So that's the first reason it's different, right? Because of the, 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 the knives that you get. The other reason is, uh, the routine that David teaches is great. It's a 40 minute download and probably 20 minutes of it is talking about different techniques that you can actually do. And he goes through so many different paddle routines, so many different paddle moves, so many different ways of paddling, so many different ways of switching, so many different ways of doing the reveal. And it's almost like a toolbox for color changing knives. So you can take whichever ones you want to and create your own routine. And the routine that David does is brilliant. I haven't done it for a couple of reasons. One, it's all about Labor Day, which wouldn't make sense in the UK. No one in the UK knows what the Labor Day holiday is. That's like an American thing. And secondly, David's routine is very funny, but it talks about um, uh, stabbing people and it talks about like not, uh, actually stabbing people, which for, I live near Birmingham, that's not something that you ever want to talk about or joke about, unfortunately. It's, uh, uh, it wouldn't work. That presentation wouldn't work for where I live. But, you know, for the right person, I think it worked really well. And David pulls it off brilliantly. Uh, I've been playing with the knives for a few days now. And this is the routine that I came up with. I like the idea of having like, this is the different things that you need to learn as a magician. And throwing the vanish in there and throwing the penetration in there. Have you got any other questions? Because I know you don't do the knives because you're too young to play with knives. So have you got any other questions? Is it easy? Good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, the nice thing is David's uh, teaching, as you would expect, is brilliant, right? Um... The thing, uh, and it is really easy, you can take the, uh, the techniques that David teaches you and put your own routine together. If you want to do the routine that David teaches you, it's like a five phase routine and it's absolutely brilliant. And it's very, very easy. It just uses a standard paddle move. These knives are so easy to paddle. I'll let you touch the knife, do a paddle, do a paddle move with that. Just, just paddle it. Isn't that nice to paddle? It's really easy, isn't it? Yeah. It's really easy. So you've played with different things and you've paddled different things before. Your mommy just gave me a look when I gave you that knife there. She was like, don't not give him that knife. Um, you've paddled lots of different stuff in the past. Isn't that because of the weight easy to paddle? 
Like you've never touched this knife until then and just gave it and you did the perfect paddle move. So it is very easy to do. Even if you've never done a paddle move before, you'll be doing this in absolutely no time at all. So yeah, it's actually really easy, but you can take all your own bits and pieces out of the routine and do it. What do you think of it? What do you think of the routine? Good. <laughs> you're a bit unsure there. Yeah. Just, are, you, are you a bit annoyed still that David said you're annoying? No. Yeah. No, seriously, what do you think of it? Do you, do you like the visual? Do you like how it looks? Yeah. I know that your favorite paddle uh, routine is um, uh, Color Stick by Ape Stevens. Uh, but this is this is really good. Look, I've been doing the color changing knives for years. This is a great resource. You get the best knives I've ever seen. You get the best download teaching the knives I've ever seen. And the price is very reasonable as well. I'm going to give this 95%. Like I said, one of the cool things about working pro is that you can just put this in your pocket. I'm now reset. It's an instant reset and it takes up virtually no pocket space. Just two knives in one pocket, two knives in the other pocket and you're ready to go. And I think creative people will take their own routines and they'll really make something of it. What are you going to give it? A hundred. A hundred percent. Ninety-five from me, a hundred percent from him. If you're looking for a really good colour changing knife set, there is no better colour changing knife set on the market that's better than this knife set right now. Highly recommended. Right, so the next review we've got is Aeroplane Mode by George Iglesias and Twister Magic. And when this came in, you like airplanes, don't you? Yeah. And you were like, anything about airplanes, he was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing, I wanna do that. So you nicked it straight away, and uh, I, I, you watched the whole thing, performed it on me, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, I've since watched it. It's actually really good. Um, are you gonna perform the routine? Yeah. You perform it, and then we'll talk about what we think about it, okay? Yeah. Here we go. So, Daddy? Yeah? I know because I'm gutted we were supposed to go in Easter weren't we and we couldn't go yeah I was gutted yeah I feel really sad about it well we're gonna you we're gonna go on an imaginary adventure an we're imaginary gonna, adventure yeah, on an airplane I'm excited okay so we've got all of these um we've got all of these like airport passes boarding cards yeah boarding cards Close. <laughs> yeah. yeah and and it tells you what seat it is and where you're going Okay. So this one you're going to Paris, seat two four A. Yeah, yeah, I see that. You've got Las Vegas, seat A B. Yeah. Beijing. Beijing. You've got seat one seven D. You've got Madrid. Madrid. <laughs> In Spain, near where I should have been going. Yeah, seat A B. Okay. I get the yeah. idea. And we've got all. You're not going to read every single one of those off, are you? No. I pray that take forever. Yeah, and you've got all the way over here to Bangkok. Yeah, Bangkok, yeah. You've got Lima. Lima, yeah. And you've got Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, you're going to pick one. Anyone? Yeah, anyone. Anyone. Okay, spread them out for me then. I'm going to go down there. I'm going to go that one. This one here. That I'm happy with this one. Okay. Do you want me to look at where I'm going? Yeah. And remember the seat number. Okay, where I'm going and the seat number. Yeah, and don't got that. Tell me. Yep, got don't that. Tell me. Okay. Okay, and now I need you to look at the safety rules. What the, you get on a plane? Yeah. Okay. The Does anybody ever read these? I don't think anyone actually ever reads these. Yes, emergency exits, uh, breathing apparatus, whistle, blah blah blah. How a whistle will help? I don't know, but there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've read them. Read them. Mhm. Mm okay. Right. I need you to sit on this. Sit on it. Yeah. You want to sit on the safety instructions? Yes. <clears throat> okay, I've sat on it. Yes. You sat on it. Okay, so and I'm in the want, airplane. Yeah, and I want you to pick your drink. Okay? Okay, how do I pick it? Right, are you going to name a number? How many drinks are there? 20. 15. 15. Have a look. Mm hmm. Okay, got it. You got it? Yep. Tell me. Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels whiskey. Yeah. Do you want to put that over there as well? Yeah. Jack Daniels whiskey. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. And uh, now, now, do you remember, right, I've got a prediction. That's a prediction? Well, not a prediction, but this is orange juice. Well, that's not whiskey. Um, um, <laughs> I'm too young to drink whiskey, that's <laughs> too young to drink whiskey. Yeah, I suppose you are too young to drink whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll give you that. But now you need to pick your film. Okay. You've got all of the films. You've got Aladdin. You've got Star Wars. 
You've got Toy Story, The Great Showman, you've got Joker, you've got Up, you've got Dumbo, you've got Indiana Jones, you've got Doctor Doolittle. Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby. You've got Avengers. <laughs> Bad Boy for Life. Mm -hmm. You've got Pirates of the Caribbean. Your favourite film? Yeah. So I need to pick okay. one? Yeah. What do I do? Just, I just open, open it. up like that and don't tell me. Do you want me to tell everyone else? Yeah. Shall I show them? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, you can turn around now. There you go. Okay. Okay. Now, do you remember that safety seat that you're sitting on? Yes, I do. What if all this stuff was predetermined on that? And I, and I knew everything that you were going to say. That would be impossible. Yeah. I don't believe you. Well, what, first, what was the drink? Uh, it was Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels whiskey? Yes. Uh, what was this, what, where were you going? Cairo, Egypt. What was the seat number? 14C. What was the film? Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now get get the safety rules out and something's going to happen. Do you mean something's going to happen? Yeah, do you remember the safety rules? I bet you didn't notice this. Notice what? Look. Well, first, what's that number up there? 14 seat 14 C. Seat 14 C. What about here? What are they all watching? What are they all They're watching? They're all watching Indiana Jones. Yes. What? Look at this. Do you see anything weird? No. You've got an E, you've got a G, you've got a Y, you've got P and T. Egypt. And you've got pyramids by the plane. <laughs> yes, we have got pyramids. And have you weird with something else? You've got C, you've got an A, you've got an R, you've got an R, and an O. Cairo. <laughs> Which is in Egypt. Yes, it is. With pyramids. With the pyramids. But do you know what else? What? Look, seat 14C. Indiana Jones and Indiana Jones. And look, there's a pyramid in the background. <laughs> but do you remember about the whiskey? Yeah, well, you got it wrong. You got you got orange juice. Well, it's not actually orange juice. What? Look, it's just a tube. That's the whiskey. Mm, let me test. That is definitely Jack Daniel's whiskey, dude. That is amazing. Dude, I love that performance. I really love that. That was that was brilliant. That was really cool. You really put yourself into that, didn't you? You really love that, yeah. And that is real whiskey from behind the bar, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> this review show might get very interesting. Right, okay. Um, oh, burns. You're right, don't drink whiskey. Right, okay, that was uh, that was amazing. That I can't what else can I say? What else can I say about that? I mean what you've just seen, how easy is it? Let me ask you some questions. How easy is it? It's easy. It is easy, isn't it? It's just a series of clever forces, really, isn't it? It's yeah. it's a series of clever different ways of forcing various different things on people. It's basically a confabulation routine. Uh, but instead of, you know, it having things written down, it's, it's a series of forces. But it, was, it is all really easy to do. But the props are just so well made. Like, these look exactly like boarding passes. This looks exactly like a safety sheet in an airplane. That movie book looks exactly like a movie book. The, uh, um, the, the drink thing, the way that they force a drink is actually really clever, isn't it? The way that they, uh, they force a drink is really clever. And what I love about this is if you want to, you can talk about influence and you can talk about subliminally influencing people because they can look at this. And this is one of the nicest things about the routine. And when you showed it me, this is what I loved. You look at this and it looks just like the safety sheet in, a, in an airplane. You could look at it all day and you wouldn't see anything. But all the revelations are built into this. So you can kind of say, you know, you were being influenced throughout the whole of the routine. Because what seat number did you get? 14C. Well, look, you got 14C there. Just like you did. You can, you can build all of that into the routine. And I love that Should you've got... Should I just got... show them that there's 14C and all that stuff? I bet there's... Well, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to... Uh, put some video of this on the screen. So I'm going to video this. Yeah. I'm going to do some B-roll on the screen while we're talking about it. So instead of holding it up to the thing, we can put some B-roll on. I think that'd look good, wouldn't it? Yeah. But yeah, I do love this final revelation like this where you go, boom, 
And you love that. I love it when you get a big revelation on stage and you go, look, right there, watch C14C. There, they're watching Indiana Jones. Look, you can see the pyramids in the background. Thank you. And I love the whole, I love the whiskey thing. I really do love the whiskey thing with the whole orange juice and it's kind of the magician in trouble thing. And the whole thing, it's just a well-constructed routine. It really is a very clever, well-constructed routine. You told me that the next time that you get a chance to go actually on stage, you're going to do this, aren't you? Yeah. He's going to put this in his actual stage act. And I totally agree. I think this is sick. Um, you know what I plan on doing? If you guys haven't seen it, I want you to do me a favour and go check out No Brainer by Bill Abbott. Excuse me. Go check out No Brainer by Bill Abbott. Bill is a really clever guy. And uh, I use No Brainer to close my parlour show. And I've got about five or six different ways that I do it. And here's the thing, in Phantasmagoria that I do with Steve Della, we actually use No Brainer in that as well. And it's, a, it's another confabulation style routine where some of the information that you predict is live. Some of the predictions that you pick are forced. I think you could combine this with No Brainer and oh my gosh, it would be an awesome combination. I think you could close any show around the world with it. I love this. I absolutely love it. I didn't think I was going to like it. And then you showed it me. I saw the train. I was like, oh, that's all right. I saw you do it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'm not going to do this. You need to do this in our two-person show. What do you reckon? You and me, yeah. two-man show. You need to do this. It's yeah. brilliant. It's awesome. What you, come here. What, what are you giving it, dude? What are you giving oh my it? God. 100, I thought so. Yeah, it's, you know what? I'm giving it like 98%. I think it's really clever. The props are well made. They're going to last a lifetime. It's such a well-constructed routine. I have literally nothing to say about this. You watched Ryland's performance. If you think that that would fit your show, then go for it. Um, you won't go far wrong. I'm trying to think, actually. Could you do it virtually? I think you'd struggle. I think you'd struggle to do it virtually. You might be able to, if you, if you, maybe, maybe with a bit of thought you could do it virtually, I'm not too sure, possibly. I'm actually thinking about it, and I think you might be able to do it virtually. Yeah, if you spread, the only thing I'm thinking of is the, is the boarding passes. Because you could get you, a kid to just stay, and you could go... I'll sort of take them one go, at a time and just say, say stop, whatever you want to. And then go, pop! Yeah, you could do, yeah. And the, uh, the drink thing would be easy, because you could just hold the list up and get them to look at it. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think. And you, you can, can go yum. <laughs> it's so weird. Right, uh, hundred percent from me, uh, from him. Sorry, ninety-eight percent from me. It's another really great trick. Highly recommended. Right, so next up, review number three, we have Backfire by P3 Studios, Penguin Magic, and R. Paul Wilson, who is one of my favourite magicians. He is amazing he does so much really good material uh this is a packet trick and even though paul wilson has so much serious skill when it comes to uh playing cards and coins and anything he decides to pick up this is actually a really easy routine uh you're going to perform it aren't you ryan yeah. and uh and, and then we'll talk about what we think about it it's designed as a walk around routine and two people hold handkerchiefs uh, hold a handkerchief and that's kind of an impromptu sort of table um, so we're actually going to bring Ryan's little sister in Thea uh, to be the other volunteer in the trick here we go. go hey Thea let me show you something weird I've got four cards one two three four aces yeah and then one two three four kings okay yeah four kings and four aces yeah yeah which equals eight yes it does Eight cards, okay? Mm hmm I'm going to put the aces on top of the kings. Okay. I'm going to put the aces uh, in the centre of the hanky. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. And I'm going to put the kings under, but not like that, all four of them. Okay. I'm going to do it one by one. Okay. Okay? Okay. But this is the first one. It turns Whoa. into an ace. Let me try the next one. Turns into an ace. Very ace. cool. Next one turns into an ace, which means the last one turns into an <laughs> ace. Yeah? Very cool, very cool. You got four aces, yeah? Yeah. Which that should mean the kings are there. Yeah, the kings are there. Yeah, have a look. No, because the kings are here. <laughs> four kings and the four aces are there. Not, the aces are not in my hand. The, the, they're down there. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Thea? Very, very weird. 
Right, so that's Backfire by Paul Wilson. And basically, it's kind of like Reset by, uh, by Paul Harris, uh, but a very clean way of doing it because you're using four gaffed cards. So as you saw Ryan do, uh, what's really nice about this is you get a handkerchief, you get them to hold a handkerchief, which means it's great for walk around. And you have the kings, you have the aces, uh, you just drop them in the in the packet, they change places underneath, and then they, they kick back and change again. Uh, I did a version of this that Paul Wilson put out years ago called Ricochet, and it was a lot more difficult than what you just did there. It uh, was using uh, different gaff cards, and it used the Asher Twist and no handkerchief, and it was very, very tricky to do. Uh, because of the handkerchief, and because of the routining, and because of the way that the cards are gaffed, and they're a lot more gaffed than you'd actually think, um, it makes the routine quite easy to do. Uh, you have to think it through. There's a lot of procedure in there. But, I mean, from the audience's point of view, it's very clear, isn't it? It's literally four cards in the mat. Uh, sorry, four cards on the handkerchief. One at a time, they change. Um, and the actual change sequence is quite easy to do, isn't it? Because of how the cards are gaffed. Um, uh, it, you didn't do it here because we didn't have the space. But what Paul Wilson suggests is you have the gaff set up in the deck. So you start off by having a deck of cards. You take the aces and the kings out. Uh, you do the routine, and uh, doing it that way, it means that everything's examinable straight away, doesn't it? As soon yeah. as you finish the transposition, they're left with everything to examine. Although, to be honest, I don't think people want to examine this. Uh, you know, I, I, I just don't. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm basing that on when I perform Ricochet, but I don't think people will want to examine it. It's really visual, it's really nice. You know, the uh, Paul Harris's reset is a routine that always kills. And the problem is you have to have a table in order to perform it. This is something that you can do walk around, you can literally do it as a packet trick, or you can have the cards, as I say, set up in the deck. Uh, well, you performed it. How long did it take you to learn how to do that? You've been working on that for a few days, haven't you? Yeah. So how much practice did you put in? Lots? Yeah. Okay, okay. Did you find it quite tricky? Yeah. A little bit. I'll tell you what was tricky for you. Because you're left-handed... It was a spread. It was, you had to change the whole thing round, didn't you? I had to do a back spread. Yeah, because if you've been left-handed, how it, work, it, it works better with right-handed people. When you're left-handed, you have like to change... It's like that, but when you're right-handed, you've got to spread that way. But when you're left, you've got to spread that way. Yeah, so that kind of confused you a little bit for a while, didn't it? Yeah, I've got an idea. Make left-handed and right-handed. <laughs> Make the cards left-handed And you could put an R, H, and you could put an L, H in the top corner. There you go. <laughs> Paul Wilson, if you're watching this review, Ryan would like a left-handed set of cards to do your trick. What did you think of the trick? Did you like it? Yeah. I know you like really visual card magic, don't you? Yeah. Um, okay, so let me ask you a question. Would you do this? Because uh, some of the tricks, let's be honest with everyone here, some of the tricks that you learn for the review show, you do it once. You learn it for the review show and you never do it again. If I asked you to do some of the stuff that you've learned for this review show, you wouldn't have a clue. The unless best, like the best the trick the card trick that four magicians are like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, like, you don't what you tend, to, about. you tend to remember all of the... Uh, yeah, I can't remember it. It was all dealing and stuff. Um, you, uh, you tend to remember all of the Alakazam tricks and stuff like that. And, yeah, uh, I, can't, I can't remember. You can't remember. Did you, would, you do the, would, you do, would you do this? Would you keep this in your repertoire? Or would you, are you going to forget it as soon as the review show is finished? I'll try to keep it. You're going to keep it? You're going to keep yeah. it? Yeah. Anything over 90, I keep. Uh, what, what no, you, anything over 80. And what are you giving this? hundred. You're giving it a hundred. So it is keeping it. If you if you do walk around magic, this is a great routine to do because you know with walk around magic, you've got no table. It's a great way of getting a couple of people involved. There's no angle issues to this because you're using the uh, the cloth and you're going underneath the cloth. There's no angle issues at all. It's really nice. Uh, so I highly recommend it. It's a really really good routine to uh, to buy. Uh, you can, as I say, there's no there's no downside to it. And it's a lot easier than the original version as well. And the gaffs are very very clever. You spend a couple of evenings with it, and you'll have it down no problem. Uh, I'm giving this ninety percent. You're giving it a hundred percent. Like I said, it's another good. Uh, so it's another good if, if yeah. you get one, you're gonna keep it because keep anything it. over. I've got a better memory 80. than you. I've got a better memory than you, so I remember everything. Do you remember everything? Yeah. Okay. What was uh, the card that four magicians? Shut up, Ryland. Let's move on. <laughs> So the final review is by one of my favourite magicians. It's another one by Penguin Magic, P3. And this is 
Scott Alexander's Tenacious, which is his version of the card in box, the signed folded up card in box. I'm going to perform it for you and then we're going to talk about what makes this so different to other card in boxes. Okay, right, we're going to do the quick version of this. It uses like this Altoids tin. We'll get back to that in a minute, okay? Yeah. And uh, we're going to use a pack of playing cards. Do me a favor, buddy. Uh, you're going to grab a card. You can take any card you want to. I don't really mind. Sure. Uh, show the camera, don't show me. And then just write your name on the face of the card. That would be good. And when you're done, let me know and I'll take the pen back. Yeah. The pen back. Cool. And we're going to put the card back. Is the ink dry here? Yeah. Cool. So you're going to put the card back in the deck. So just say stop. Stop. Cool. Put the card back there. And just in case the camera hasn't seen it, let me give it one last look. Uh, we'll leave it. You know what? We're actually just going to put it a little bit further down. We'll, we'll go a bit further down so it's more towards the bottom. You can push it in yourself. Excellent stuff. Well done. Is that fair? Yeah. But you know what? I want you to give the cards a shuffle as well, if you can, please. Let's give them one shuffle. That would be good. Go for a foul. You got, you've only just started learning the Pharaoh Shuffle. I learned it three weeks ago. Oh, did you? Okay, I'm very sorry. And when you're... I'm uh... joking. I learned it a year ago. <laughs> no, you didn't. I learned it when I was six. And you know I did. Okay, fair enough. And when you've done that, put the deck right there. And hold your hand out for me. I'm just going to put the, uh, the, the mint in there. Okay? Just yeah. like that. Now watch. Uh, just put your other hand on top so I can't get to it. Let's see if we can do this. If I told you I could shuffle the deck with one hand and find your card, would that be good? Yeah. Watch this. Just shuffle the deck with one hand. And I think I've got your card. But watch, I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to make the card invisible. Throw it up. It's gone. Look, lift up your hand. Because this is the weird thing. I want you to watch... Check this out. Look, if I just open up this tin, I want you to see there's a folded up card right there inside the tin. Take the card and fold it. Open it up. Was that the card with your name on it? Yes. Boom. There you go. So there you go. That is Tenacious by Scott Alexander. It is a signed card folded up in a tin in a kind of an unsuspecting mint tin. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to be thinking here. What does this bring to the table? Because this sort of routine has been around for years. I think it was, was it Fred Capps? Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think it was Fred Capps that first had the original idea of the card to tin. I've seen so many different versions over the years. Ke uh, John Kennedy's Mystery Box is one that I did for many, many years. I still do now. Prop Dog bought out a version of the Mystery Box with Lego. Uh, which was really cool. I don't think you've seen that. You should look at that. Uh, Penguin themselves actually bought out a version by Danny Garcia a few years ago, which was nice, but it was kind of fragile and it broke very easily. Um, and, and there's ungimmicked versions as well. Um, Toy Box is a great version, which is available as a download, again, from Penguin Magic, uh, which has got some really clever thinking behind it. Uh, what I like about Scott's, there's a few things I like about Scott's. First of all, it's built into a, uh, into a Altoids tin. Um, which just looks perfectly normal. It's the sort of thing that you put down. Uh, people know what this is. It's, you know, it, it, it's not something that arouses suspicion. Uh, also, there's nothing for it to go wrong. It, it's the, it, there's nothing to break. You know, I talked about the Danny Garcia one, which broke on me. There's no, it, it's very low tech in terms of how it works. So there's nothing for it to go wrong. It will literally last you a lifetime. Um, I think that some people might get this and be disappointed. But when I opened it up, I was like, Really? Is that it? And I was kind of like, well, that just seems like, that seems like a very obvious way of doing this. But then when you actually see the download, and Scott talks for about 40 minutes about how this routine works, um, you kind of realise that there's a lot more to this than you'd think. In Scott's full routine, what he does is he gives the mint tin out. They hold on to the mint tin. He has a card picked. And then... Um, uh, the card disappears and it appears inside the mint tin, but then he does it again. So after doing it the first time, he takes it out and he says, unfold it, is that your card? Sign it for me. So they sign it and then it goes back inside the tin again, which is a really clever way of doing it. Scott also teaches his C fold, which is a much better version of the Mercury card fold. Uh, I didn't use the C fold in that performance. I used the one handed fold, one handed card fold, which is a fold that I've been using for years and I actually favor that over the Mercury card fold. So, um, and it works fine. It, just so you know, this works fine with a C-fold, with a Mercury card fold, with a one-handed fold. But it does teach his C-fold, which is really good. Much better than the Mercury card fold. Um, yeah, and, and it works. That's the key thing. The load is done under misdirection. Literally, in the act of picking the, uh, in the act of picking the tin up, right? In the act of picking the tin up and just showing it, you've loaded the card. 
in that instant you've loaded the card. Uh, it's not that difficult. You need to be able to control the card. You need to be able to do a little bit of palming. You need to be able to fold the card. Other than that, it's not that difficult. Uh, there's several live performances. And one of the things that I love about Scott's material is when you see a, lot, a Scott Alexander live performance, you can just see the energy he puts into anything. Um, I like this. Also, it's less pocket space than like a mystery box. It also looks more organic, unlike a mystery box. Um, I, I think that this is right up there with like toy box. Uh, I think that both those are really, really good. Um, I, I, you know what? I'd recommend this. I, you're gonna, here's what I want you to do. When, if you buy this, don't be disappointed with it. And what I mean by that is it's very easy to buy it not watch the download, look at the prop and go, come on, we've all been there. When, when you buy a magic trick and you look at it first of all to try and figure out how it works, I think you might be a bit disappointed when you first look at this. But I want you to look past that because when you actually watch the download and you look at the thinking behind the routine, you actually think that although this is low tech, it's probably the best way to accomplish this routine. It's an instant reset. It can be done anytime, anywhere. There's no angle issues. It can be examined. It can be done walk around. It can be done on the table. There's lots of different ways to accomplish the trick. And all you need is a pack of cards and you're good to go. Um, I'd recommend it. I'm going to give this 90%. I think it's really good. I've done cards a box for years. I, I think it's really good. Do you? Yeah. So I've kind of just rabbited on that whole thing, haven't I? I'm really sorry. Did you forget about it? Yeah, I forgot you were there. I'm like, Who's, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You're riding, right? Now, uh, what do you think? You know I love Scott Alexander. Half of my cabaret act is a Scott Alexander tribute act. Uh, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? Do you like it? Yeah. Uh, I know you want to practice this, but I mean, you, you're you learning the card folding stuff at the moment, aren't you? So yeah. it's not something that you actually do at the moment. But it's, um, no, nah, it's really good. What are you going to give it? 100. Did you like the routine? Did you like the performance? Yeah. You know how it works. It's very clever, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it 90%. He's going to give it 100%. It's highly recommended. And that's a new review show in your back. That was all right. It was okay. I think you put a bit more energy into it, though. Try again. That's a new review show in your back. That was cool. That was great. You always know you've done a good one when mommy looks over it like this. Do me the angry mommy look. That's the one. <laughs> Look at the look, I'm going to get in so much trouble later. Anyway, as he said, that's another review show in the bag. Thank you very much for watching. Four really good products there. Buy uh, them all. Buy them all, buy them all. Yeah, spend all your money. I'm sure uh, the creators of this trick. What's your favourite one out of the four? Uh, don't ask me that one for them. You, you, I think you're going to say the, the aeroplane one. All four of them. <laughs> all four of them. I like all four of them as well this week. It's very, very good. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And once again, as the year draws to a close, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in every single week with me and Ryland and watching the show. Uh, you guys are absolutely awesome. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. And we'll see you uh, in 2021 with another review show.